All right. So s this weekend uh, we held our third hackathon, um, and we continue the tradition of having a tutorial first, and then a hackathon to allow more time for hacking. We held the tutorial on Saturday night. Uh, it was a tutorial called "Let's Build a BGP Traffic Controller." Uh, in Go by Brandon Bennett, and a special thanks for him for coming in on a Saturday night. He flew in just to give that presentation. Um, I think we had as much as 40 people in the room uh, here on Saturday, um, and it was a really good presentation. Uh, for the hackathon, we had 80 individuals uh, registered. We had some folks on the waiting list, uh, and we accepted all the waiting list attendees that showed up. Uh, but we may have to think about a better way to handle the registration numbers. But uh, initially, the room was thought to hold 75. Uh, we, we were able to accommodate 80. Um, and we'd like to c continue doing this, make sure we have enough space. Uh, so now every time that staff comes to a new hotel or other venue, they scope out whether there's space available on the weekend uh, to have a hackathon. This weekend, we also had DNS OARC, and we're competing with five weddings in this hotel. Um, so it was a, a very uh, difficult job for the staff to get that room, but they got a room that held 80 uh, individuals. That resulted in roughly 12 groups, of which 10 got far enough that they presented a prototype uh, in our forum. Uh, and then today, as soon as uh, TJ and I wrap up, we're going to have the winner presentation. And at 3.30 this afternoon, we have two more presentations for uh, the first two runners up. Uh, I just wanted to say, now's the time for you to hack your network. Um, and this conference played a valuable role in making sure that we had access to the routers, to the command line, and that we weren't forced to go through GUIs, um, OSS systems, and so on. Uh, but we're now past that. You can program your network. You can hack your network. You can write code that runs on your network if you like. And on top of that, there's a lot of virtualized uh, and lab environments that even run on your own laptop that can allow you to do that development without breaking the network. Um, because as we all know, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to have to fix something. So test it in the lab first, develop in, in a test environment, and then deploy it. Um, if you get a chance later to look at the slides, there's a couple of suggestions here for how you can get started. Um, and still, even at Nanox 71, even though the hackathon's over, we do have relevant presentations that are coming up. And there are a number of tutorials that have been given in the past that you can access on the website. Uh, there's also a Facebook group uh, full of supportive people if you want to get started uh, in hacking. And so if you're interested, find one of the folks up here, uh, one of the runner-up presenters. Uh, we did have students. Old timers, new timers, uh, everything in between hacking at the hackathon. So if you want to get started, now's the time. All right, thanks, Sean. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm TJ from Facebook. Um, this is the second hackathon we, or third actually, second in a row hackathon we sponsored. Um, last time we were focused on peering automation. Uh, it seems like the right form for that. Uh, this time we went a little bit different. We wanted to try uh, some sort of you know egress or dynamic traffic controller. Uh, so Brandon tailored his uh, tutorial on the night before, uh, focused on some of that. Um, we kind of broke it into three separate problems. You have the problem of collecting the data from the network or devices. You have the uh, business logic or decision side of it. Uh, and then you have how are you going to influence that traffic. Uh, so we kind of presented that about a week before the hack started. Uh, we started up an ideas pad where people could uh, contribute their ideas, throw out random things. When we kicked off the hackathon, uh, people came up and pitched their ideas, and then we ended up creating, uh, as Sean mentioned, about 10 groups. So at the end of it, uh, these are the 10 groups that we had. Um, so we had Kafefe Kafka, Hack Overflow, The Scope Creeps, The Injectors, uh, Streamers, Go Jet Yourself, The Downtimers, Every Day I'm Polin, Flow Symmetry, and Go Fail Hard. Um, so uh, here we have the winners. So uh, beside us, they'll uh, present after the downtimers. They came in first. Uh, we have Kafefe Kafka uh, as first runner-up and Hack Overflow as second runner-up. Uh, you'll see way down at the bottom, Go Fail Hard as last. That was my group. Um, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so uh, I suggest if you didn't come to the hack, you should come check it out. We have people that are experienced, people that have never done anything before. 
Uh, the tutorial that Brandon walked through kind of took you from little to no experience on how to, you know, get started with the Go programming language, but you could use Perl, Python, C++, it doesn't really matter. Um, come to the tutorial and learn. Uh, we'll probably do similar formats in the future, and then come to the hackathon and, and come hang out. It's all about meeting people and learning a skill. So thank you for everybody that participated, and I hope to see you all there. All right, thank you. And now our winners of the hackathon, the downtimers. Hi, I'm Colin McIntosh. Uh, Aaron Natach. Uh, and we worked on maintenance traffic controller as our project for the Nanog 71 hackathon. So a little bit of background before we get started. Uh, we all get too many maintenance notifications. We have a lot of peers. Uh, they do a lot of maintenance. It can be very hard to track all of these maintenance notifications. And when you have a lot of external connections and circuits, uh, it can be a real pain to manage the downtime and communication around these. So we set forth with the uh, plan to improve the communication and the notifications themselves. So a little bit of what we worked on at the last Nanog Hackathon, uh, which led into this. Uh, at the previous Nanog Hackathon, we worked on a project that allowed us to read partner maintenance notification emails. Uh, it was very simple. We just read emails from an IMAP folder. We tried to identify which of those emails are maintenance notifications. There's an existing maintenance notification BCOP standard uh, that has some headers in in an ICS attachment that we can use to identify uh, maintenance notifications. So we looked for those first. If we couldn't find it, we then fell back to some naive regex parsing, which was just uh, some simple regex strings that pull out start time, end time, circuit ID, and some other small details about the maintenance event. Uh, and then once we have all these events, we bundle them together, put them in a schedule, as well as Google Calendar. Uh, so then Aaron will talk about what we worked on uh, during this hackathon. So as the same as the theme was a traffic controller, uh, this year we implemented traffic off the network links during planned maintenance. Uh, we used identified circuit IDs to match with the device and the peering session and then created a schedule off of the emails of the peering sessions that are going to be turned down and when to turn them down and back up. And then created a daemon that watches the schedule and shifts traffic before and after the maintenance. So uh, a little bit about how the project works overall. So the first two pieces that you see there are receiving the email from partners and parsing them out. Uh, like I said, that was what we worked on at the previous hackathon. Uh, the continuation of it was focusing on the schedule of maintenance events and then the Python process that we're calling maintenance traffic controller. Uh, the Python process pulls the events out of the schedule um, and combines it with data in our circuits database. For the purpose of this hackathon, we just made a mock circuits database. Uh, and then we chose to use Napalm and some Jinja 2 scripts to actually kick off uh, the traffic shifting. The benefit and I guess real reason why we chose to use Napalm and Jinja is everyone has their own flavor of their network and everyone has uh, their own preference for how they would shift traffic off of links. So we didn't want to give a you know, one size fits all solution for um, shifting traffic. So the Jinja 2 templates really allow everyone to implement their own uh, version of traffic shifting. So the controller that we worked on this time, uh, as I mentioned, it matches information from the emails to circuit IDs in the database. Uh, once we have that information, we can identify uh, the device that the circuit is on, the interface it's connected to, the peer, the session, um, and any, any other information that we need to actually uh, shift traffic. The controller will then watch the schedule. Uh, it'll look for events that are about to go into their maintenance period. For our purposes, we set it to about five minutes before the maintenance start time. Uh, so about five minutes before the maintenance starts, it will go and kick off the script that will shift traffic off of that link. Controller will then sit there, it'll keep watching, and it will uh, wait until the event is, uh, has reached its end time. Once it reaches the end time, it will disengage maintenance mode, which is our way of saying it'll just run the script that shifts traffic back onto the link. Uh, so a little bit about traffic shifting. Uh, so currently, as we know, network operators are going to shift traffic in all the different ways that they specifically want to. For the purpose of the hackathon, we implemented two ways into the Jinja 2 templates that we created. Uh, we created for three different vendors, Junos, Cisco IOS, and Cisco IOS XR. Uh, specifically, we implemented two different types of traffic engineering, deny all or AS prepending. Um, so if a BGB uh, Peer is going to have a maintenance window. Uh, we imported a specific deny all on in and out. 
Uh, so you can keep the pairing session active, but no traffic is leaving or entering the network. Uh, and if you do not necessarily want to completely block off the peer's traffic, uh, and let's say hypothetically you only have two peers, uh, so you still want to keep, even though that peer is going to be going into maintenance, uh, active for traffic, uh, you can just do some traffic engineering to essentially set it at a lower, <coughs> uh, B2B preference or, uh, path selection. Uh, so specifically we implemented AS path prepending on the outbound policy and, uh, inbound we set the local pref really, really low. Uh, so therefore BGP path selection will prefer other routes. Um, but if need be the peer that is in maintenance will still be accessible for traffic. So like we said, uh, these were just some examples that we put together. There are many, many options and, uh, it's very easy to write your own templates for this. So uh, we're not going to do a live demo because it's not actually very interesting to watch. So I included some uh, output from our logs from the controller as it's running. So in this log, you can see the, uh, the controller starts a scheduler that goes and watches the actual schedule of events. It'll start ticking through. It'll, once it sees an event that starts soon, in this example, we actually loaded in a mock event that was starting soon, um, it will go and do its work to engage maintenance mode. So in this case, it went and engaged maintenance mode on a lab switch. Uh, it'll then check for events that have recently ended and pull them, and pull them out of maintenance mode. Um, in this case, had we didn't wait around for the, the fake maintenance to end, but had we done that, you, you would have seen uh, it disengage maintenance mode on that switch. So. Yep, so possible future work for the project. Uh, checking the link for BGP status before we actually turn the link back up, uh, if need be, uh, support more writing protocols than BGP, such as OSPF and ISIS and any other specific routing protocols the network operators desire, uh, enabling maintenance mode and alerting system like Nagios, which several people use, uh, to suppress alerts. Uh, you want to go over the others? Yeah. Yeah. So the other things that are really important to this, uh, that, uh, we actually still need to focus on a lot um, it, because this is an ongoing project that we've been working on over multiple nanogs uh, is we need to actually get people, vendors, partners, peers to support the X main note headers in the ICS attachments. Uh, this makes it much easier to actually consume these maintenance notifications in a more standardized way. So we're not trying to parse out human readable text. And in addition to that, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on the main note BCOP, um, in addition to the amazing amount of work that has already been done. So Eric is going to talk about some of the work that the main note that we did on the main note BCOP, uh, during this Nanog hackathon and some of the stuff we're going to do in the future. Uh, also all the code that we did for this, uh, hackathon is already up on GitHub. If you want to check it out, uh, you can also send us an email if you have any questions, Eric. Thank you, Colin. So some of the work that we've been doing uh, lately in support of all of this, uh, Colin alluded to, this is really about trying to establish some standards to support automation and maintenance notifications. Uh, we've seen organizations that have implemented uh, regex parsing to uh, parse their notifications. They often uh, still continue to spend, like Facebook's a great example, hundreds of hours a month dealing with situations where those notifications don't, uh, don't parse. So lately I've been working a lot with Todd Parker at Twitch and as well as Ryan Gunter. Todd's been a huge proponent of all this and a lot of uh, what I'm talking about today is due to, to his hard work. So again, just to restate our goals, uh, we're trying to establish some conventions for formatting maintenance notification. It's really in, uh, to enable machine parsable content, support tooling and automation. And the goal is to save time, uh, all of our time is precious, and then also reduce uh, the chance of human error. Computers can do things like convert time zones from uh, one region to another much easier and more reliably than, uh, than people can. We want to preserve human facing content. There's a lot of value in the maintenance notifications we've all developed over the years. So really the standard is about adding additional content that's formatted alongside the addition, uh, addition or alongside the uh, human facing content that's already present. And we want this to really be general enough for any service. It's not just about network services, although it obviously can be used for that. So we divided the project into three large phases. Uh, the first is to draft a standard that's pretty much complete. Second is to develop implementations uh, and, and aid early adopters in uh, implementing uh, the standard. Today we have libraries and Python and, and Go and Jade Hour from Facebook has been a fantastic uh, supporter of the project in developing the, the Go library recently. And once we have enough operational experience from all of this and we feel we have a, a solid standard in place, then we'll move on to publishing that and uh, getting broad adoption across the industry. 
thanks to uh, the advocacy efforts that we've been engaged in, we have some great early adopters. So Level 3, uh, Talia, and Zeo have committed to implementing uh, these standards. We're helping them through that process, working with them to get uh, this implemented in a development capacity so they can do some trial runs and eventually move on to production. And I'm hoping to see more of uh, you participate here. We'd like to get additional names on these lists and help you move through the process. We're looking for people in pretty much every area of the industry, carriers, ISPs, IX operators. If you're a programmer, either in one of these organizations or outside, we need your skills to help uh, contribute to the project, improve our libraries, work on additional tooling uh, that other people are, are uh, doing around this, and uh, get this adopted. If you have any interest in any of this, feel free to reach out to one of us. We're happy to help answer questions and support you. Uh, we have a bunch of information that's available as well. So please uh, let us know if there's any interest, and we're happy to help you however we can to implement these standards. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, and congratulations to the three of you on a great project.